In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair some nasty old cock, whether it be in your shower, your bathtub, or wherever it may be. I'm going to give you a couple of different methods as to whether or not you should use tape or not. You're going to have to decide on that one when you see the results. I'm going to make it real easy for you. This is Rudy from the Home Improvement Channel with another video showing you how to fix things around the house. If you're a subscribed member to my community, then welcome back. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below and please like this video if it was helpful for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so today we're working on this tile shower. Now, luckily, the problems with the moldy cock are pretty limited to around the bottom. All right, the sides and the walls are pretty good, except for just a little bit at the bottom. Now, if your entire fixture is bad, you can use these same principles in this video to uh, redo your whole project, okay? So I got this little uh, scraper from Lowe's. It's uh, cheap, and I don't really like it, uh, but I just wanted to show you in the video what it was all about, all right? I usually just use a painter's tool, and that works a lot better, but let's give it a shot anyway. So, yeah, it's got these uh, pointed edges right here to square it up in the wall and then kind of scrape along with it. And it, it does work a little bit, all right? Not terrific, but uh, it, it does something, I guess. It'll wear out quick because it's plastic. The reason I'm doing this is, is because you don't want to try to caulk on top of old caulk. As you can see, somebody already did that. There's a second layer of caulk there. Uh, but your problem will come back much sooner if you try to caulk right on top of the uh, moldy caulk. So here's the painter's tool. Let's give that a shot. Um, you kind of do have to be careful with the painter's tool, especially if you're working on a fiberglass tub. Uh, you can scratch that tub pretty easy, so you kind of have to be gentle with that. All right, but it does work better than the plastic uh, scraper, as you can see. Clean it out the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you do see any moldy areas, those do need to be uh, not really perfect, but pretty close to perfect. All right, so I'm going to mix this with, or I'm going to spray some bleach on here when I'm done before I caulk again, and that should take care of any uh, remaining mold. Also, with the painter's tool, you have to be careful if any tiles are sticking up right here. As you're scraping along, you can chip the finish off of the tiles, so be careful with that. So here's a moldy area here. As you can see, this uh, plastic tool doesn't work worth five cents, and the, uh, the painter's tool isn't that great either. Um, you know what really does work for these difficult areas is a screwdriver. A screwdriver does work well, and I'm probably going to have to uh, dig out my screwdriver to, uh, to get these areas off of here. I do want to get this area pretty good because, as you can see, there's some molding going on right there. It does take some patience for sure. Okay, so I've got everything scraped off the best I can. Uh, the best combination that I have found is the painter's tool and a screwdriver. A good old screwdriver does great. Okay, if you're working with a fiberglass tub, you do have to be a little careful this, with the screwdriver or the painter's tool for that matter. Amazon does have those uh, scraper tools with a metal uh, tip on them, and they do probably work a little bit better, but uh, you don't need any of that stuff. The, the old painter's tool and the screwdriver does work fine. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of bleach here and kind of spray it around. All right. I've mixed some bleach with some water here and a little bit of simple green. I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes, and then I'm going to come back and clean this off. Okay, so it's been a few minutes now, and uh, I think this is ready to uh, wipe off. Hopefully, there's any if there's any residual mold there, it'll, uh, it'll disappear with the bleach. And also, uh, you might want to use some denatured alcohol after the bleach to, uh, to get rid of any kind of residue that the bleach might leave on there, just to make sure you have a nice clean area to, uh, to re-caulk to. You do want to let that dry completely before you try to re-caulk again. Also, with the bleach, you might want to leave the bathroom door open and the fan running. All right, so what I've done here is I've taped one area, and I'm going to give you a comparison between the tape and uh, I'm going to do some more caulking without the tape, and you can kind of see which area or which, which one you like better. Okay, the tape does take a little bit more time, but it may be better for a beginner uh, so that, you know, you're, it's more forgiving. So usually on the caulk tube, I like to uh, 
to cut the uh, end of the caulk at about 45 degrees like that right there. You can cut it straight if you want to, but I usually do cut it at an angle. And if your gun has a tip cutter, you can also use the tip cutter in the gun if you don't have a knife like that, okay? Also, you wanna, if your gun has a poker like this, you just wanna poke through because there's some kind of aluminum foil there or something from the factory. If you don't have a poker, then use a small screwdriver or something like that. Also, another thing I wanted to show you was is there's a release on the back of most caulk guns that releases the pressure. So when you're done caulking, it doesn't spill all over the place. Uh, this gun is self-releasing, so there's no issue here, but um, this gun here has the release like that. So get used to that. Whenever you're done squeezing and caulking, you want to hit that and release the pressure, otherwise you're going to be cleaning up a big mess. It is a good idea to have a lot of paper towel on hand. All right, so before we get started, I kind of like to give the caulk gun a little bit of gas just to, uh, to get it started. That way this big blob doesn't wind up in your line. Okay, just wipe it off. This is why you need lots of paper towels. All right, so as you can see here, I'm kind of going a little squiggly on purpose. I just wanted to, uh, to show you, no, you don't have to be a perfectionist to make the tape work, okay? Um, it's, it's very forgiving to do it this way. All right, so I'm going to show you a comparison here in just a minute, but I'm just going to finish this line. All right. See, I'm kind of going slow and squiggly on purpose right there. Just to give you an idea that you don't have to be perfect to make the tape uh, function the way you want it to. So what works best to smooth that out is just your finger, just an ordinary finger. You don't need to wet it, I don't think. This is silicone anyway. You don't need any fancy scraping tools like that. You just need a good old finger. That's what I always use. You don't want to let too much caulk build up on your finger. You just kind of want to wipe it off every once in a while. All right. So we're going to have to do this again in a minute here because um, when I pull the tape off, it's going to lift up the edges. See, I'm going a little faster there. But uh, it doesn't really matter with the tape. It does, uh, it does allow a little bit of mistakes. All right, just go ahead and smooth it out. All right, I'm going to pull the tape off before that starts to uh, set up. You don't want to leave that on there. Now, when you pull the tape off, pull it away from your joint. That way it doesn't wind up getting in what you just did right there, okay? And just don't let it fall. Just Once you get your tape off, just kind of smooth it out again because you're lifted up the edges with the tape a little bit. All right, see, very good. Don't let too much caulk build up on your finger. Just keep wiping it off. Make spe several trips if you have to. All right, let's just finish up the other side right there. Looks good. That's it. So over here in this corner, as you can see, I cut up the wall about an inch and a half because that was kind of moldy looking. So I'm going to change that back to gray right there. I'll probably let the almond caulk dry a little bit, and then I'll touch that with the gray to, uh, to finish that joint. This time we're going to do it without the tape. That way you can see a comparison and see which way you like better. I kind of personally like the, uh, the no tape better myself. It is faster. It's less work. Uh, but it's not as forgiving, so there are some disadvantages to it. And same thing, just uh, use your finger and smooth it out. All right. In the corners, you just kind of have to finesse that. That does take a little bit of practice. There we go. I'll smooth that piece out a little bit right there. I, I can see it still needs a little bit of work, but um, I think I do fix that here in a minute. Let's finish up that uh, that length right there. This is the long side of the shower. Make sure you keep your gun at an angle so that it doesn't do what I just did right there. Now there's one other tip right here. Now if you feel like the caulk is too much to one side or too much to the other side, you can actually turn your finger from left or right, whichever way you need to go to uh, push the caulk to the other side. So that's basically all there is to this. It does take a little bit of practice, so don't be too discouraged if you don't get it good the first time. The trick is to not put too much on and don't leave the edges real thick. Okay? I'm not going to have to uh, redo the whole shower, luckily. The sides are fine. 
So right here, I made it a little bit thick on purpose so I could show you. So if you happens to do that, just take a piece of paper towel and fold it and then use your finger in there or a screwdriver to push. I know you can't see it, but to push on that paper towel and kind of wipe a straight line right there and it does clean that edge up pretty good. All right, I've had to do that many times. Just kind of straighten that edge out and remove a little bit of uh, the smudge right there. And just use your finger and smooth it on out. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm not going to show you the whole shower because I don't have to redo the whole shower. Uh, this corner right here, like I was saying before, I'm just going to do the same thing in gray. And uh, we're going to blend it into the, uh, to the rest of the wall. And here's the finished project right here. Looks pretty good, I think. As you can see, the gray was not an issue at the bottom. Okay, very good. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.